Welcome to Buckets. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. This is your Thursday NBA playoffs workshop. We'll break down all the sides, bets, totals, props, including whatever we can find to get you something the way that we got you the Steven Adams under rebounds prop, because I don't know if we're going to get that one ever again. Everything we talk about is on the Action Network app. It's the best way for you to track your picks, get up to second information on how to bet where to bet, where the money's coming in, where the bets are coming in, all of that in the award-winning Action Network app. I want to let you know, before we do the best bets, and we'll do this quick today, uh, we do want to talk real quickly about Devin Booker's injury. Devin Booker suffered a hamstring injury. The Suns lost to the Pelicans. It's obviously a, it's an injury that takes a long time to recover from. Uh, Pels won the game outright versus the Suns. Brandon, what's your reaction to that hamstring injury? I don't want to overreact just yet. You know, we saw a thing with the Suns this year uh, by man games lost. They were, they ranked second highest in the NBA. Like this is a team that has already had to play shorthanded and still have the best record in the NBA. So I think this is the spot where it's like, okay, we love the Suns at like, we love their path to the conference finals. We love that they got the Pelicans who they're still a much better team with, even without Devin Booker in that we like the matchup for next round. Either they get the Jazz, we've talked about that matchup, or they get, we don't know what's happening from Luka. I, I don't want to overreact too much yet because it feels like, to me, this is where this is where all the work from the regular season pays off and that softer path that they have maybe pays them back. But, you know, we, we, we've got to keep our eye on it. And to me, what's interesting is how it's moved the odds around, and I'm wondering where there might be value now. Raheem, do you have a reaction? Yes, I have a total reaction. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, no, did you have a hamstring injury too? No, I didn't have a hamstring (laughs) injury. (laughs) But look, I mean, if you want to look at precedent, I mean, Clay Thompson missed one game with a hamstring injury in game one of the – not game one, excuse me. I think it was game three of the 2019 finals, and he came back. Everybody remembers the ACL injury, but he missed one game. So that could be possible here. But my reaction is the Suns can legitimately lose this series. Like, I'm totally concerned. And, you know, Brandon said this all year. He said they didn't fit the profile of a team who could win the championship. And I, 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 I totally disagree. And now when I look at them, I see a team that doesn't really have an extra gear without Devin Booker. Like, hear me out. If you look at this team, they got Chris Paul. I love Chris Paul to death, but they're relying on a bunch of role players who to hit shots. And Chris Paul, at his age, he can't necessarily take over a game and be that go-to scorer every game. And you look at this series, and I said it on the last episode, the Pelicans are dominating on the offensive rebound. Like, in game one, they had a 46% offensive rebound rate. In game two, they had a 30% offensive rebound rate. So they're getting more opportunities and cracks at the basket. Now, you look at this series, both games from the Pelicans were outlier shooting games. Game one, they couldn't buy a bucket of chicken. Game two, they didn't miss a shot for the last eight minutes of the game. So the truth is somewhere in the middle. And it's indicative by what you're seeing this line is. Like, I saw them open the Suns at minus one. Pick them in some places. Now, obviously, it's up to the Suns minus two at this point. But this is a pick them series. And if the Pelicans are going to continue dominating on the offensive rebound, I mean, you look at the guys that the Suns have. They got guys like Drake, Jay Crowder. He's either white hot or he can't make anything. So I'm concerned about the Suns for this round. I'm concerned about them for next round, even even with Devin Booker going back. I think I I had a total misread of this team. Are you betting the Pelicans then? Because the Pelican this series is not being priced as a pick'em or anything close to it. So are you are you betting the Pelicans? I'm not betting the Pelicans. I'm gonna be honest with you. On the futures, I like the Mavericks. That's where I'm looking. I'm taking a shot on the Mavericks. And I want, I told Matt this on an Action Network podcast. I felt like they had some value. They were like plus 4,200. They're down to plus, like plus 2,500, plus 2,000. But I think the Mavericks, I, that's that's where I want to take my shot at. Great. So I've either got Brandon at 14-1 to 1 with the Jazz or you with the Mavericks plus 2200 i'm gonna have to deal with the next round great all right let's go ahead and get i'm gonna tell you i don't i don't have a reaction on the series yet i gotta do a deeper dive like i get the offensive rebounding advantage it was a six point edge in second chance points 
Like I, the Pelican shot the lights out. Devin Booker's a really good player. I, I need I need time. I don't have a take on this one. We'll get to it when we get to it next time here on Buckets. But let's go ahead and get to the games. Uh, on Thursday, we have three games, including only one day off. It starts with the Memphis Grizzlies going on the road versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And everyone is very confident. Oh, one game outlier. Memphis is back. No problem. I'm getting a lot of like, this is going to be done five or six. That's, that's, the, that's the mentions in my... Uh, those are my Minchies on this one. Uh, I will tell you my concern in game one for the Wolves was the shot quality differential we talked about in the pod and that stabilized in game two. I liked Memphis in game two. I bet Memphis in game two. I cashed Memphis in game two. Uh, I'm going to stay away from this one. I think that this is probably a split 2-2. Two, two. I think that Minnesota probably figures out. I think Minnesota has adjustments. I do. Uh, I will say this. Props to Taylor Jenkins for being a coach that doesn't waste time. A lot of coaches are not going to disrupt their rotation in game two. They're going to be like, we're going to do the same game plan and just try and play better and adjust. And Taylor Jenkins saw two fouls get picked up on Steven Adams and the way that that game was going and said, yoink! And Steven Adams... Uh, has been banished to the netherverse. We'll see if he makes an appearance later in the series, if they need a counter adjustment or next series, but it does look like Taylor Jenkins has made that adjustment. He goes to Xavier Tillman, uh, which or, uh, Xavier Tillman, which honestly was, who has been bad, who has been out of the rotation and has been hurt and it worked off great for him. And that's sometimes the stuff that you got to do as a coach to try and pull some stuff. I like Tillman's game in general, but huge game from him. Um, I'm going to be looking at Wolves angles for props, my edge right now, if I, if I had to bet it, I'm looking at under and Wolves. Those are the two things that I'm probably leaning towards because if I think, and probably Wolves money line, if I think the Wolves are going to get one of the two, if I'm going to bet it, I'm going to, I will bet this one and then lose and then bet the next one. And then, you know, come out just barely above even. Um, but I do think, I don't think Minnesota screwed here. I don't think the adjustments are like, that's it. They solved the Wolves. I think the Wolves had a bad game, got off their game with the, with the foul calls, didn't shoot well. There are adjustments to be made, but I'm not sure this is the spot to bet, Raheem. Yeah, I, I got, I totally agree with you. Like on the under, like I, I think when I'm, I ran my playoff numbers and I, I think I have this at 233. I just think where they have it set is just way too high for a playoff series you know, where both teams are playing hard. And then obviously, I mean, these teams were getting to the free throw line at will and it still didn't go over. So I'm looking under here. As far as the side, I think this is a really, really, really tough play. Um, I would be looking Memphis for no other reason than the fact that if you look at their shot quality in both games, they actually dominated. Um, so I think you kind of got to look Memphis there. And if I, if I play a side, I'm probably going to be playing Memphis. I think my thing is, um, do I believe that the Wolves can can wear down that that differential? Yeah, I, I think they can probably get it down more reasonably. Um, I also think the Wolves lost complete control of the fast break game in game two. Yeah. Uh, one thing that will help them in stopping tra that transition is scoring, which I think they'll do more easily at home. Mm -hmm. Role players make more shots. Uh, that's part of my read, Brandon. Brandon, do you have a props angle for us after the glory that was Steven Adams under on rebounds? Yeah, I mean, my, my props angle is uh, I'm, I'm eating kiwis for breakfast. I'm drinking kiwi juice, kiwi Gatorade. It's all about kiwis here. I, I checked. Steven Adams is not listed on the props. There actually aren't many props up for this one yet, unfortunately. So I think any of the books are kind of like, okay, so who is playing and whose props do we need to get up here? I, I would love some Brandon Clark and Xavier Tillman overs, but we did get Clark really late in the game yesterday, like an hour before tip-off. They finally had a few Clark lines up. So I think we will definitely get some Clark lines. I don't know if we're going to get many for Tillman. Um, I'm not sure we're going to see Steven Adams lines posted again. That was uh, that did not go well, I think, for the books yesterday. We do have right now, uh, I saw at BetMGM, first rebound of the game, the, top, uh, the best odds on the board are Steven Adams. The second best odds are Jared Vanderbilt, who, by the way, played nine minutes and had only two rebounds himself. Adams had three minutes and no rebounds. So that, that kind of relates, though, to where I'm at on the series, which is I, I'm worried for the Timberwolves that like we're starting to get to the spot where these they have so many one-way guys. And like 
they're, they're having to make a choice. Either, holy cow, the Grizzlies have scored a 117 and a 124. We got to get some defenders out there. We got to somehow try to slow this train down. Now we can't score because now we're defended. You know, they're defending us five on three because we've got guys out here that can't do anything. Or then you get your offense out there and then you're just giving up a layup line on the other side. If they just, they don't have enough two-way guys. It's, it's uh, you know, it's what makes a difference between a team at the very top that can make a deep run and a team like the Timberwolves that probably just isn't set up to do that yet. So I, I do, I agree with you, Matt. I, I think that there are answers here. It appears certainly the Grizzlies are going to play a little smaller. I, I don't know if we're going to see, I don't know. We'll see Steven Adams again, the series, to be honest. I, I don't know. He's going to be out there. Certainly the smaller Grizzlies thing, the switch we talked about after game one, we like to have that set up to me. I don't know. That's really adjustment to me. This is on cat. Now this is on towns towns had that stretch in the first quarter. He picked up the two fouls right away. It's what he does. He gets into the trouble. Everyone got in foul trouble. There were more free throws in the first quarter of that game yesterday than any first quarter of the last 25 years. So, you know, thanks for the ref show. But this is cat. If you like the Timberwolves in this game, you have to bet Towns over. It's like you have to bet him to dominate the glass. And like he had in that stretch, he got the foul trouble. Chris Finch left him out. He he left him on the court and trusted him. And I think that was a long-term play. Like, look, buddy, this is the playoffs. You're going to have to learn how to play in a spot like this and limit yourself a little bit. And for a bit, Towns was awesome. He was aggressive. He drove the lane. He, he dunked on a couple of guys. He was really good. And then he faded, then he got more foul trouble, and now it's that. So to me, if you believe in Minnesota, if you like the Wolves, this has to be on Towns. If he can't step up against the smaller lineup, if he can't take it to Jaron Jackson, get him in foul trouble and flip the scale, then I think that this might be moving to a spot where this is Ant's team before too long because this this has to be the spot with the Grizzlies smaller where, where, we'll, where Towns steps up. Yeah, it's kind of like an indicator. Um, they switched 17 times in the game in game one. Memphis did. They switched 22 times in game two. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's a lot. Five more possessions is a lot in a single game jump. Um, so I'll go back and look, and, and maybe they figured out something on the offensive end that the Wolves just can't stop. Uh, I will say I think that there are lineups that I think Finch can go to that are bigger now that he's made them downsize. I think there are lineups he can go to that are bigger where they can get more of a physicality edge. Um, D'Angelo Russell is going to have to be- have to have a better game. That's probably this. He's had two bad games. I don't think D'Lo will have bad games all throughout. I'm not going to bet the D'Lo over, right? Because I don't want to be ahead of it. I'm not going to like, I-, I hate it when I start doing that, when I'm like, yeah. Ooh, this didn't work, but now, now it'll work. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't like when I, when I wind up doing that, let's go to the second game on the slate, which is the Dallas Mavericks and the Utah jazz, Utah jazz are six and a half point favorites. At home, totals 210 and a half, opened at eight and at six and a half. Right, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know how. It's crazy. It's wild. But Luka Doncic, somehow, with an injury that's kept you on the shelf, it's possible he could play in game three <laughs> or game four. I don't, I don't know how. It's crazy. It's, it's wild. I don't know. You guys have the exact same training uh, assets in terms of, of availability of resources and <laughs> possible that Luka Doncic is going to return the series. It's it's a miracle, really. I, I mean, my mine was a little bit more serious. I had a, I had a, a, a tear, but kudos to Luka Doncic for you know being able to come back and, and hopefully he's the same guy because I think they have a real chance of making the Western Conference Finals. Uh, I, I just you know when I look at this series, to me, the Jazz are like they just have a bunch of guys who can't defend, like. You saw in that game, the Mavericks only had three turnovers the whole game. And I don't know if that's necessarily sustainable. I don't know if the shooting is sustainable. I mean, they they were absolutely lights out, 22 of 47, 46.8% from behind the arc. Look, despite all that, I still want to take the Mavericks because I just don't trust the Jazz to be laying six and a half points. So... I need to get you, you guys' thoughts on this because I, I just can't – at this point, I can't trust the Jazz in crunch time. Brandon, I'll let even, you go first. Even though all the numbers – all the numbers say you probably should take the Jazz in this spot, but I, I can't do it. 
Yeah, we know how I've been loving the numbers and the jazz and, and just writing out regardless of what we're seeing. So the, there are numbers, I can talk myself into numbers on both sides here. On the one side, the jazz were plus 19 rebounding again and didn't matter apparently, but they had the big advantage there. The other hand, the jazz took only 29 three-pointers again. That was a problem in game one. This is what Dallas's defense does, but that's what Utah's offense is supposed to do. They're supposed to get those threes. I love Mike Conley. I love Mike Conley. Ooh, boy, he was cooked in game two. It was, it was not great. And not great for Donovan Mitchell on defense, by the way. Like they're just going at him. They were like, where who who's Don on? All right, great. We're gonna drive on that. And like I tried to watch the game the other night, you guys. It was really weird. On my TV, they had a replay of the Clippers game from last year on. They just it was just a replay. They were just <laughs> driving the lane, kicking it out. And it's like every single play penetrate, drive, kick, open corner three, swish, just over and over and over again. I have been looking incessantly for Maxi Claver overs, like find me Maxi Claver threes. He hit eight last game. You're not going to go eight for 11 every game, but that clearly to me is a spot that worked for them. And he's, he's like, we, the, the whole unicorn thing is an overused term, but there are not very many guys that can legitimately protect the rim on one end and then shoot and space as well as Maxi can on the other end. That's a problem. That is a real problem, the lineup that they went to here. And, you know, Matt, you've talked a lot about that when you solve the Jazz, it's over. And, boy, it, it, it really looked like the Mavs solved the Jazz in game two. And it just were like, all right, A, B, A, B, up, down, up, down, wide open three in the corner. And I, I have a hard time getting past that spot. The, the, the worrying signs for the Mavs are this. They shot only 44% on two-pointers the last game. They were down to 13 free throw attempts. That was like less than half what they had in the first game. They're still getting hammered on the boards. So I don't know that this is going to be easy. I think the series is live, certainly. I think my Jazz future is probably not at the same time. We've been waiting for Utah to catch a little luck, and we now have Luca is hurt. Devin Booker is hurt for next round. John Morant, we didn't mention, he kind of looked a little gimpy last night. I mean, who knows? I'm certainly not adding to my position, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but Brunson, 41, and Maxi eight threes. Like, that's not going to happen every game. But just that didn't happen, but the way that they're getting those looks, that does look repeatable. And I, I am worried for the Jazz. So all this stuff is connected. I'm doing a video for this for action. Here, here's kind of the deal. The Jazz can't stay in front of anybody. They can't. You're right. The perimeter defenders can't stay in front of anybody. And what happens is everybody goes like, it's not Rudy's fault. It's not Rudy's fault. They can't do this. This is why you pay a, a rim protector $35 million a year. That's why you do that is so that you don't have to worry about that as much. And if the Jazz could run their drop coverage because the opponent was playing a traditional big lineup, then the guards just have to worry about getting over the screen and they can do that. That's why they're one of the best, best drop coverage teams in the league over the last five years. That's totally doable. They can't force them back out of it because Rudy can't score on the other end. Cannot. They gave him chances to, I went back and watched. They gave him opportunities to punish them in game two and he couldn't do it. Um, he started the game. They kept passing him the ball. He could yep. turn the ball over. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, Raheem, here's my big question. If Luka gets announced in, what does this line go to? Because it opens eight, it moves to six and a half off the news he might play. And I don't know if that's a, the book's being like, whoa, we can't have an eight hanging if he plays. And I don't know if that's just like, or if that's, if that's the news came out, he might play and everyone hammered the Mavericks. And so it moves from eight to six and a half. Right? Because like, if it's at, if it's at, if you drew put it at five is that right yeah i think he had yeah he put it he yeah he put it around five okay so let's say that they they split the difference right and they went yeah. to they moved it a point and a half right he's probably not going to play and it moves like another three if luke is announced in and it goes to three and a half I don't, I hate to say this. I might bet jazz at that point. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's Utah at home and altitude. 
my my Luka full season my full, my full season numbers have Jazz minus four point three. Yeah. My post All Star break numbers have it. We're looking at Jazz minus two. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, look, I, I I will see how the market reacts based off of the the Luca news. If Luca's out, I'm probably betting Mavericks. Yeah. Because I do not think that they can that they can cover the eight and a half or the six and a half. And I think it probably goes back the other way if Lucas announced out. I think it probably goes back up to seven, seven and a half. Like that, that's my advice is like, we're recording this on Wednesday. Like, wait, wait yeah. to see what, what the Luca news is. And mm-hmm. once Lucas announced in or out, react accordingly. That's, that would be my play. Um, mm-hmm. The only other thing I would say is I do think there's some value on Daniel House props if you can find them. And Hassan Whiteside props, if you can find them. I think Snyder might have to try different lineups for longer to try and limit some of the damage and get different advantages, especially when the bench is... I think the bench actually brings them a lot of advantage. I think the bench is actually playing pretty well. Uh, Brandon, do you yeah. have a prop on this game? You're, you're, you're saying overs on those, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because House is, is the one guy, literally the one guy on this team that can defend on the perimeter a little bit. Well, one and a half. We'll, we'll give Royce O'Neal a little credit. He's just not fast enough to keep up with some of these guys. So... I don't know. We're going to see house props out there, but I agree with you on that one. Uh, I want to talk about the series a little bit. I, I do like uh, Bojan Bogdanovich points overs. They, they've the way they've been defending. He's just continued to get a lot of good looks. They're still defending him with guards. So I like that one. His over 21 and a half is even odds right now. But let's talk series a little bit because I, I don't think Luca is going to play in game three. I don't have no Intel. That's just my instinct is when you, when you say we're optimistic he's going to play in game three or game four, yeah. I read that as Probably we four. think he's going to yep. play in game four, but let's go ahead and, and plan accordingly, Utah. Go ahead and waste some time on this just in case. So let me let me talk to you about a couple possibilities here because we know what we saw from last year. When it went bad for Utah, it was just done. So what if Luka doesn't play, the Jazz come home to Utah, we know how good they are at home, we know they're good at altitude, Altitude, Luca's out. Jazz to win game three plus Mavericks to win the series is five to one at BetMGM. What do you think about that one? Say it again. Jazz win game three, but Mavs win the series is five to one at BetMGM. I don't to mind me, it. that it's a it's a very plausible right. outcome where the Jazz get the home game and then Luca comes back and they've got too many answers and, and just go from there. You, you say you, you do or don't like it. If you didn't bet Mavericks plus 500 after game one, the way that somebody said yeah. to do that, then I, I like it. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. I got, I got two more quick for you. Mavs, Mavs series line. I know you love the series lines. Mavs plus one and a half on the series line is even odds at bet MGM. That one I like so, a lot. I like that. I love that, that one. Yep. The cash that the Mavs either need to win the series or even just push it to seven. So you like that one. How about this? Do you agree that if the Mavs take game three, we saw what we saw in game two. If they come out and do that again in game three, do you agree with me that this could go very sideways, very fast for the Jazz? Mavs in five. So Mavs just winning out. No more Jazz wins is 16 to one at points bet. I think that's in play. Too much risk. Too much risk with, yeah. with, two, with two games at home in Utah. It's too much risk. Yeah, I don't like that one. And also, I, I think if the, if the Mavericks somehow pulled out tomorrow, I think Luca's not coming back until game. Yeah, not, that's he, true. He's not coming back. In yeah, if, though, though I looked at the schedule, the games are still two days apart up until we get to game six. So there's not really like a soft spot to wait extra for Luca. But that, that is a good point, though. All right, last game on the slate. We can do this one real quick. Uh, Warriors are at Nuggets on Thursday night. I'll be at that game. Um, Raheem, the Sharps believe in the Nuggets. This open Warriors minus two. 91% of the tickets is on Golden State. 96% of the money, 96% of the money on this early game and our early bet tracking is on Golden State because they're laying less than two po- or two points now. It moved back. It moved from minus two to minus one and a half. Like, I I, I will tell you I'm on Golden State and don't feel bad about it. I It's very rare that I will ignore the market this much, but I, the Sharps can believe in Denver all they want. I just don't think that the Nuggets are winning a game in this series. Look, I don't think you're very sharp if you're betting on the Denver Nuggets. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, look, I know a lot of these sharps, they, they play the number. But when you look at this series, the Nuggets just don't have any way to deal with the guard play of Poole, 
Curry, and Clay. And that's the bottom line. At the end of the day, they put that death lineup on the court with the three guards, with Wiggins and Draymond Green, and the Nuggets don't have anything for it. And even right now, Jokic has been – he's been a, a great defensive player this year. He can't he can't guard in, in space with those guys. And, look, I, I just – to me, I said this before. I think we spoke about this on the Action Network podcast. I like game three because if you can get a superior team versus an inferior team and you can lay that short number, I think you have a, a you're in a terrific spot. And I think this is one of those series to where, look, you're going to have a lot of sharps playing the home team down 0-2 in the first quarter in the first half. That's fine. You look at the Nuggets, they've, they've won these first quarters, but at some point they can't hold up. And I'm looking at the Warriors for the full game. I think that's the spot. Brandon, I'm going to be on Monte Morris overs, and that's pretty much the only thing I think I'm going to play on this besides Warriors minus two. Yeah, I, I don't know about Monte Morris overs, but this is hammer time for me on Warriors. Like, I, I don't know what we're doing here. This series is, is done. These are two teams in different universes right now. It's so not a referendum on MVP and Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets and the team makeup. It's nothing. They're missing their guys. The Warriors are healthy. Steph, Clay, and Poole, you mentioned those three. So far, postseason and regular season combined, those three have played 144 minutes. They're plus 116 in 144 minutes together. Those three. It's not just the Nuggets. This is a problem for everyone. The Avalanche came in the second quarter. It came again in the third quarter. I don't mind that the Nuggets might start out hot at home, down 0-2, that whole thing. Because guess what? If they do, we get Warriors third quarter. Warriors third quarter is back, guys. It's back. And we might get a great chance to bet Warriors third quarter in a spot where, like, this team knows. This team knows what they can be. This team knows not to screw around and let those extra games, you know, tick onto the, the, the odometer. Like, they know they've learned now what to do. I don't think they're going to screw around here. They're going to put this team away. And if they show up motivated and ready to put the Nuggets away, I just don't know how Denver has a shot with what we saw in those first two games. And look, it's not just the threes. The Warriors shot 66% on twos in game two. Like they're getting, they're getting looks at the rim repeatedly. And the Nuggets defense is just scrambling in a half step slow on everything. Uh, I, I, I'm worried that the money is all on the one side and it's all too easy and too obvious. But I, I just, the only reason that I wouldn't bet the Warriors is if I'm going to bet the Warriors to sweep, which is still plus 225 at BetMGM. Plus 225. Are you are you not taking I know we are pre- played it already. We played it after before the series and after game one. Plus 225. You win this game. Are the Nuggets? I know it's a resilient team, but are, are they really no, going to come back done. and take a game? No, they're done. It's done. That, that, that is fried chicken. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. There's value on that. Let's go wrap it up for Buckets. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to check out all of our work in the Action Network app. You can track Brandon <clears throat> and Raheem's picks in the Action mm-hmm. Network app. Make sure to leave us those five-star reviews wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another episode of Buckets.